Well, that brings up the question. Do you think that the Soviets could get a better deal from your Democratic opponent than they could from you? Oh, I'm not going to comment on that. time frame on this? If you are now willing to negotiate the possibility of a summit, do you think it could be held before the election? Whenever the conditions that lead to having one uh, would be fine. But one thing, let me say and make clear, I'm not going to play political games with this subject and go rushing out for some kind of political advantage to announce that I have asked for a summit meeting. Uh, that wouldn't do either one of us any good and certainly wouldn't be fair uh, to them. But this is legitimate. We've, the door is open and uh, every once in a while we're standing in the doorway seeing if anyone's coming up the steps. What's your uh, estimation, sir, on a time frame? I couldn't give you one. I... Mr. President, some of you advisors are saying privately that the Soviet leadership now is actually so divided and uncertain that there's really not much hope of progress at this time. And you've seemed to hint that when you say that there have been three leaders since you've been in office. Is that your view, and what are the implications of that? Well, we don't know. There is, uh, there's been the theory advanced that uh, they're kind of marking time and, uh, and perhaps in some disagreement about what course they should follow. But uh, there's no way to know that. So we just keep on trying. Sir, in recent speeches this year about the Soviets, you have held out an olive branch to them, but at the same time, you usually either denounce their system or their actions. Would it be better, in an attempt to get this dialogue started again, whether at the summit or back in Geneva, if you simply held out the olive branch without also taking a shot at them? Well, I don't think I've gone out of my way to just call them names or anything. I've usually pointed uh, to something that uh, is counter to their protestations of uh, wanting peace and cooperation, such as walking away from the arms talks. Uh, uh, I don't think that I've said anything that was as uh, fiery as them referring to the funeral service for the unknown soldier as a militaristic orgy. Uh, if we're going to talk about comparisons of rhetoric, they've topped me in spades. Leslie? What? Sorry. Uh, if I may. You, uh, you know, you, you shorten the number of questions we get in with all these follow-ups. All right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Anytime. I don't know if everyone else is left as unclear as I am on where we stand with the summit with the Soviets. Are you inviting Mr. Chinyanko to come and have a summit with you? And are you willing to have your advisors sit down with his advisors to work out uh, the, the pre-planning that you both say is necessary? No, we have been in contact with them on a number of issues that we think uh, bilateral issues that should be discussed between us. Uh, of course, there is the matter of the, of the arms talks also, although we've not been talking about that since uh, they have simply walked away. Um, all I can tell you is that in what I call quiet diplomacy, we are in contact with their people trying to establish a basis for, for talks. What? Is this an invitation? We, we haven't reached that point yet. <laughs> um, I'd like to join Leslie in not being quite sure here. Um, there seems to be a, a change or something that we have at least not known before. Your communication with the Soviet leadership, has that been with Mr. Chernyenko? And what has, has the subject been a summit, a meeting between you and Mr. Chernyenko? No, the, much of the communication has been simply on the broad relationship between our two countries, and my communication by writing has been with Mr. Chineko. If I could just follow up, would you be willing to meet with Mr. Sorry, Sam. <laughs> I, he's much more gentleman than uh, if, are you, Would you be willing to meet with Mr. Chernyenko even if he won't send his delegation back to the nuclear arms talks? Yes. Yes, I'm willing to meet with him. Chris? Mr. President, you have said recently that you think that U.S.-Soviet relations would improve in a second Reagan term. But several other people who have been in Moscow quote officials there as saying that isn't true, that they're not going to ever deal with you. They feel you have been too harsh. Uh, what hard evidence do you have that relations would improve after the election? Well, 
I've been too harsh, maybe if I apologize for shooting down the KAL 707 and uh, some things like that, that maybe they'll they'll warm up and be willing to talk. Uh, no, I I think it's very obvious that uh, and I wouldn't expect them to do anything that might help me in the coming election. But I, I think when it's over and they know that four years lie out ahead, uh, if I'm here for four years, I think they'll talk. Well, that brings up the question. Do you think that the Soviets could get a better deal from your Democratic opponent than they could from you? Oh, I'm not going to comment on that. No. no. I, uh, yeah. President, as I recall, one of your previous formulations about a summit was that you would have to have something concrete to show for it. Are you willing to have a summit that does not have a concrete agreement or piece of paper like the new SALT or START Treaty or some uh, new, new initiative toward a SALT or START Treaty? Well, Lars, I've never thought about in a specific of that kind. As I've said, there should be an, an agenda, a subject that both sides want to talk about and have some desire to get a settlement. And uh, there, that holds out the promise, then, that something might be accomplished. Uh, when you don't plan that well, if I could recall, and I don't mean this to be critical of uh, my predecessors, but there was a, there was a get acquainted meeting with uh, Lyndon Johnson, and it was nothing more than that. Then there was a meeting with Kennedy and Khrushchev, and it didn't ease tensions or make things any better. This was the meeting in Vienna. Uh, it led to even more strains. So it is a two-edged sword, such a meeting, Yes, you want to accomplish something, but you want to be sure that uh, you aren't going to lead to more trouble. My point was you're willing to have a summit that does not end in the signing of a treaty on arms control. Oh, yes. I, I've said that once already here. Yes, sir.